was here, he blessed us the week before that. We were talking about the fact that we're in a season of recovery. After we are talking about dominion for the first half of the year. And we transition to speaking about recovery. Recovering the things that the enemy has taken. Recovering the things that we ourselves have mistakenly let off. There are several things we talked about. We spoke concerning the fact that the teeth, all right, cometh not but from to steal, kill, and to destroy. It's in John chapter 10, verse 10. But Jesus said, I am come that you may have life. And you may have what more abundantly. We spoke concerning the fact in Proverbs chapter 6, where the wise man said, Don't despise the thief when he steals. Because if he, if he comes to the point of stealing, it means that he has to fill his, his hunger. But however, when he's caught, he will not pay back in one, in two, in three, in four, four. But he shall pay back sevenfold dimension. And we know that the thief is the element of our soul. And by the grace of God, he has been caught. How do we know he has been caught? Because Paul said, Jesus spoiled principalities and power and made an open show and triumphed over them. Hallelujah. Amen. So we know that we are secure because he has been exposed. We also said over time that there, there are a couple of things that the thief will you know, have to repay if he still does not have in his goods what he has stolen, if he has used it in any way or the other, one of the things that he will be doing is that all his goods that he has will be he will be dispossessed of what he has because he has to still pay sevenfold. The word of God that comes to us will not return void. Are you still here with me? It must accomplish the aim for which it came. So he will not in any way go start free, but everything he stick on. He will restore it. Is somebody here ready to be restored this morning? Hallelujah. We also learn, not only that the thief will restore it, but we draw our, you know, uh, 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 reference from David in 1 Samuel chapter 30. How David got the Ziklag and then thinking that it, will, it was going to be well with him. And, you know, his entire camp was ransacked and, and his men talked about stoning him in 1 Samuel chapter 30. And while they were thinking about stoning David, David did a couple of things. That is what we're going to enter next week, first Sunday, all right? We're going to enter that space first Sunday. That is, if, 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 uh, if Ariante is still around, then we're going to see whether we will do it or not. But we, we'll consult with him. <laughs> but we're going to enter into the principles of recovery. How can we recover? We're going to enter into that. We're going to take lessons from the life of, of, of David and the life of Job. Because Job, like I, I hinted at the day, Job just didn't recover, but Job recovered double. Amen. And I told you that the, the Webster would define recovery differently. Yes. All right? Mammalian yes. uh, would define recovery differently. But spiritual recovery is not necessarily bringing you to where he once was. But he's talking about bringing you far beyond where you used to be. Are you understand what I'm talking about? We had an example of Abraham. When Abraham's strength was restored, he was not just restored to be the old Abraham. He was so refreshed as a young Abraham to the extent that when he went to his gym, to his children's gym class, all the younger fathers who were in their 20s and 30s, they were surprised that this grandfather, who was 125 years old, he was still on the swing. He was still on the... How do you guys called a dumbbell. I mean, he was still doing press-up. He was still doing push-up. And, and, and the young man shouted, ah, is this your grandfather? And the children said, no, this is our daddy. How old is he? He said, doesn't matter. That man had the gray hair all sticking all around his neck, all on his face. But yet it's not because God has said that, hey, look, they that wait. I preach this on, on Thursday. They that wait and put the Lord up. There's something that comes. Unfortunately, the church is confused, thinking that when you wait for God, the time is wasted. The church is confused, thinking that when you wait for God, things are not working out for you. That in the fast paced society we have, the, the less go mentality that has engulfed our community for good reasons, though, because you, you don't want to wait for stuff. Everything will just go through, go fast, hit here, instant, move on there, and the church have adopted that kind of mentality, thinking that if you don't have it now, it means you are left behind. If you don't have it now, come 
more on my bed, I, can, I mean on my phone, now I work far more with my phone than my iPad or my tablet or my desktop. But everything I can find out there, I can also find in here. And keep improving this stuff every time, every time. You know, I, I'm, I'm not an upper guy, AP, I'm sorry, but for what I have, I can still do some of the stuff that I like to do. You know? Now, can, can you imagine that? I can do so much work on this phone that I said I can bend it here, I can do my, you know, my PowerPoint here, I can do my presentation here, I can do my edit here, I do my email here every time. So every time, eh, 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 one minute, if I, if I have a slower internet, if I have a slower data access that I will normally have, I, I begin to panic, I begin to panic. So everybody have a smartphone, I have everything else on you. Now instead of writing a check, you can just send my uh, cash app. I'm sure somebody will catch up with me before I finish my, you know, preaching. But what I'm saying, Hallelujah. Out of the three amens, I know one person is going to be doing it. I just want to test the system. I'm just trying to test the system. You know, now instead of going to the bank to write a check or walking, running around the city trying to find somebody, I can have a cash app. If I yesterday somebody cash app in four hundred dollars before I left for the meeting, I came back and I said, ah. Oh, how can you be cash app four hundred dollars and you think it's not real money, bro? It's real money. Cash app a thousand and see what is not real money. I won't even waste time to accept it. Jesus is Lord. The society is so eastern to the extent that when things don't go eastern with you, you tend to think that God is not on the throne. How dare you think that God is not sitting because you don't have a job here? How dare you think that God is not sitting because you don't have the stuff that you pray for here? Your car cannot compare to the, to the, to the authenticity of my God in my life. Your, your next job, your apartment, your house, your dream, your business, it has no bearing on the supremacy of God. God is still God in spite of the stuff that you go through. So the fact that you don't have an instant doesn't make God any less than who God is. As a matter of fact, the church need to relearn, the church need to re baptize in the spirit of patience. Because they that wait on the Lord, there's something that comes as you wait on the Lord. The strength that you need is embedded in your waiting for God. The strength you need for the journey ahead is not going to come just because you pray it or just because you sit down and talk about it. As you wait on God, the strength you think you are losing is the power that you are gaining. I don't see what I'm talking about this morning. Are you listening to me, somebody, this morning? So we experience that with Abraham. Abraham waited on God, but the more he waited, the more strength he received. I'm, I'm telling you, the 25 years that Abraham waited, God multiplied that by three. So instead of Abraham dying around the time Sarah his wife died, Abraham had another 75 years added up to his life. How do you call that? That's not restoring him to where he was. Ah, you don't understand what I'm talking about. That's not even double restoration. That's triple restoration. For every year that Abraham went to, God added two years to let him know that I've gone, I rule time. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Time is just a statement that God hasn't done it yet. So God left it. That's eternity past and that's eternity future. Time just split eternity for a season. The hundred years you live on this earth has no bearing absolutely, but a total plan of God. God can do it for you. He hasn't back an eye yet. He can speak a word and we come to pass and it will shift the situation in your life. It doesn't shift anything in heaven because you cannot exhaust the resources of heaven. The glory of God, the splendor of God, the provision of God are inexhaustible. You can't pray down heaven. You can't pray heaven to big rocks it. Are you see what I'm talking about? You can have a recessed economy. You can have a recessed nation. You can have a recessed continent. You can have a recessed family bank, a uh, family account. But you can never have a recessed heaven because the blessings and the glory of God are inexhaustible to the infinite mind of human beings that live upon this earth. Abraham received not just a replacement of what he lost, but God, in terms of a life, God had caused him a triple for every time he went along him. Amen. So when we define the recovery with God, it is not just coming back to where you lost. It is getting you beyond where you ever dream. When we kind of recovery with God, spiritual recovery is totally different from your local definition of what it means to recover. Ask Job when you meet him in heaven. When Job got recovered, 
every shower he lost, every, every oxen he lost, every ship he lost. By the time you were ending the book of Joel, Joel was shouting and happy in double. Somebody will be recovered with double in the name of Jesus. I said, somebody will be recovered with double in the name of Jesus. If you are a person, I'll make an amen to show it. If you are a person, I'll make an amen to show it. So we realize that recovery in a spiritual sense is a beautiful thing. I'd rather be recovered with God's ten than I'll be recovered with the definition of Western. Are you still here with me? Oh, <laughs> everything that John lost, he earned double. Abraham was abused and insulted. Abraham was snared at. Huh? How can you be a whole man? You don't even have a child. You are now 65. In fact, they ridiculed Stata in his father's house. By the time he left at 75 to follow God, the ridicule increased. Because by then he had now finally heard the voice of God. I will give you a child. Yeah, it, you know, me and Abraham, so I can't put you on him. Abraham David, those are my boys. At 90, he was still struggling. At 98, he was still struggling. If you are doing the thing you're looking for, God will give it to you now. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. You are finding the right place at the altar. <laughs> are you here with me? When he finally got a child, God said, I will take this one. He said, God, you give me a ticket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> listen to me. This is serious. This is less good. I want to just fertilize the soil. Listen to me. Everybody, one of the, one of the principles of recovery is that you are never afraid to give back. <laughs> Joe said, Nikki, give out of my mother's womb. Nikki shall have eternity. The Lord keeps and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. God said, Ah. He wants you to cause God. He said, Cause who? God said that. You are speaking like one of the Jesus women. He has done nothing to me. He said, Why nothing to you? We have my children. She said, As far as I'm concerned, God has done nothing to me. I don't blame her. It's not easy to lose one. One miscarriage, you are struggling. How much more about 10 children? So I don't blame her. Give her an excuse. You see, sometimes the faith of men make you to look so rugged. The way you express it. And faith is not a, you know, it's not an actually eating force. Faith is a rugged force. So when you're walking with people with faith, they look so incompassionate. They look so inconsiderate. Everything you tell them, they are bulldozing their way through. When you give them an option, they choose the way of faith. So she said, where are my children, John? She said, it doesn't matter. God has been good to me. God has been what to you? Be good. We're not riding car anymore, John. We're waiting for bus. God has been good to me. <laughs> John, we don't live in the mansion we used to live before. We are squatting. God has been good to me. Yeah. John, the income we had before, we're not ever seen the way of income. God has been good to me. As a matter of fact, she, he looked at his way and said, can we have some time and worship? She said, what, what? I will not have worship that was born. I won't have worship. What, what, worship? Whilst Joe was worshiping, she was standing on the other side, hissing her teeth. And Joe said, God has done nothing. Can I tell somebody here tonight? God has done absolutely nothing against you. Oh, can I speak to the heart this morning? I said, God has done nothing against you. And Joe understood where he was. When all they lost, the four massive, massive evil declaration of Joe's life, and he still stood in a place of worship, he said, nothing has God done against me. And let you know, you are never going through anything to the extent that you will ever blame God, because he has done nothing against you, but he might come for you. I said, he has done it for you. I said, he has done it for you. I said, he has done it for you. Anybody who is willing to give everything to God, you are on the path to recovery. Amen. Amen. When God to Abraham, gave the son, he said, He's already yours. And literally, he walked three days, climbed the mountain, and he literally, in effect, gave his son as he wanted to God. Amen. He said, Abraham, you have passed all the tests. You are 25 years of graduate school. You have completed. <laughs> One lesson faith, 25 years of mm. learning. And now he says, Sarah will go to rest in peace. I will now show you that I'm God. 
The 25 years he wasted, God gave him. Abraham died at 175 years. He married a fresh young guy. I think he probably had been between 17 and a half, 18-ish, 19, 1921, there about. Abraham, 124, having his wedding. Kitura, 16 and a half. They are marching down the house. Abraham thought that Kitura, that Abraham's granddaughter, he was marking down the house. By the time they got to the altar, who gave this woman to marry this man? The father came and said, the father looked younger than Abraham. <laughs> what kind of wedding is this? Everybody got confused. When Abraham said, I, I, Abraham of Ur, <laughs> do, the, the son of Tira, do take thee. Everybody said, hey. But didn't she see any young person? As far as God was concerned, Abraham was as young as he has declared. You don't want to say you old. Nobody said it. You don't want to keep telling yourself you old. Yourself, you go go back to school. Hey, you know, I do an old 35 year old. Get back to where God said, You know, the way things are now. As far as Abraham was concerned, he was as young as he felt because God has said, God will surprise somebody in this season. I said, God will surprise somebody in this season. I said, God will surprise somebody in this season. Your youthfulness will be resolved. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. And so we realize that all of this has happened, but there were certain areas that we declare that God will specifically and strategically recover you. Number one, we said He will restore your soul. The soul didn't represent your intellect, your emotion, and your well. In Psalm, you know, twenty-three, verse three, He restores your soul. Those of us who are troubled for one reason or another, God is a God of restoration. And we minister that that God is a restorer of your soul. We also said that He will restore your youth. According to John chapter 2, from 25 to 28, I will restore the years. I will restore the years. No wasted years will be on your record. By the time you get there, there will be total restoration and recovery. Amen. I'm thinking that you will feel a better amen. amen. I said the record will not get requested yet. When we mention Abraham today, we don't say Abraham. Did. No, no, no. He just called the father of faith. Abraham, the father of faith. Abraham, the father of faith. Because in God's own time, he makes all things beautiful. Yeah. In God's own time, he brings the calculation of how your own story will end. In God's own time, he determines the end from the beginning. Yeah. Your story will not end when we say yes from the end. Your story will not end with Western years attached to it. Receive grace in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. The last time we said God will also restore your health. And it's in Jeremiah chapter 30 verse 17. Healing is the children's bread. I said during that teaching that before you even take an injection, pray. Before you take a pill, pray. Your medication is not the only path to your healing. It's one of the many paths. Jim said, is anyone that wants you sick, send for the elder. Your first approach must be the word. Your first approach must be the word. Your first approach must be the word. Because there's a, there's, a, there's a practical dimension, there's a medical dimension, but there's also a spiritual dimension to the things that we experience. Yes, yes, amen. You are spirit. You're just more than a body. You're just more than flesh and blood. Uh, don't let me take one time to explain this to you. You are more than flesh and blood. In fact, the, 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 the totality of who you truly are is embedded in this breath that God gives to you. And, and all that you have, all you see here is a glove from which a real man enters. And so never neglect your spirit. Never neglect the things of the spirit. And it's, just, it's suicidal to neglect the things of the spirit and focus on the flesh. I'm always sorry for those who focus on the flesh and not on your spirit. I'm telling you the truth. I'm always, I'm, I'm so concerned about people who take all of their focus and place it on the flesh and not on the spirit. It's a dangerous lifestyle. Because the things you see will perish. The ice will peel away. Everything, the mountains you see, the rocks, the hills, the ocean, they will all be, when, when, when a new heaven and a new earth descends, this moment, this moment is still rocking for Jesus to come and spend thousand years. He will dwell in a new life. Everything you see, the pollution, we have we have so crippled the world. Like the bishop was saying, we have so messed up the system to the extent that you, you, you even need prayers to wake up. How dare you wake up without prayer? You need prayers to leave your house. How dare you leave your house without prayer? You 
When you pray in the traffic, how dare you drive without prayer? When you pass with your friends, how dare you eat with somebody without prayer? How dare you hang out with people? Pray not because of a daily food. Because of the evil of this age. I did a research. Why do you think those guys, besides the spiritual blessing that those guys had, and were living 100, 200, 300, 400, 500 years, the, the actual pollution of the earth, as we continue to mess up our systems, we will receive for early death, the low mortality rate in a lot of countries, and because of the evil that we brought upon ourselves. Yeah, our diet and the pollution we have, the way we treat each other, it is psychologically the evil that prevails between ourselves. How many young people in their mid age don't die out of heart attack and out of frustration because a man cannot take care of a single woman in his life? A woman cannot push in a single man in her life. You have young people dying in the peak of their years because of the evil that have descended upon the world. Oh, yes. It's all part of why people live shot. And you have some group of fools who think that if they reach that to the first birthday in their culture, they don't know well. You are still a child to the world. You know nothing. You don't even wear your pants around it. That's why you see most of it hanging. You don't even know how to wear them. That's what it means. You don't know anything at 21. And there's a culture that says that if I don't get fired at the age of 19, 20, 21, who? If you're expecting to die at 21, something is wrong with you. That's the devilish issue that has been put into our system. That a young man, a young woman doesn't even desire life up to 100, doesn't even desire life up to 80, doesn't desire life up to 50 because of the violence and the issue that have been pure into our system. Can I talk to you this morning? Or oh, can I talk to somebody this morning? Oh, yeah. He said, with long life, will I satisfy you? Long life is our portion, long life is our inheritance. There are principles that you follow based on the word of God that will extend your life. One of those is shouldn't obey your parents in the Lord. This is the first commandment with promise. It shall be well with you. Your days on the earth shall be long. You cannot obey your parents diligently. You cannot obey your parents conscientiously. And you don't have long life. One of the easiest ways to live is through obedience. God has sent medication for every basic situation. You follow the principles, you arrive at the solution. I feel like preaching. I feel like preaching. When long life will not satisfy you. So according to Jeremiah, he will restore our help. Read Hosea chapter 6, verse 1. Hosea verse 6, verse 1. Let me read another one. Then I will go to my two for today. Are you in Hosea? Hosea is in the Bible, I'm sure. I saw it there. Let's read it together. Are you there? 6 1. Come, let us return unto the Lord, for he has stored. And he will heal us. Come on, say God will heal me. Come on, say God is healing me. Come on, say God has healed me. Say God will heal me. God is healing me. God has healed me. God will heal me. God is healing me. God has healed me. Come on, so I feel there's somebody who got something that you need healing for. Repeat this after me. God will heal me. God is healing me. God has healed me. God will heal me. God has healed me. God has healed me. God will heal me. God has healed me. God has healed me. We seek a healing by faith in the name of Jesus. We seek a healing by faith in the name of Jesus. And he has smitten us, but he will burn us out. Theologically, God is not the one that smits you. But when you leave out of disobedience from the covering of God, the enemy then has the right. Yes. Are you understand what I'm talking about? Yes. All right. So I'm going to give you, uh, you know, a commentary on that. After two days, He will revive us. In the third day, He will raise us up, and we shall live in His sight. When God restores, He heals. When God restores, your flesh also. I was listening to, uh, you know, one of our elders, and he said. When God speaks, everything listens. 
animate or inanimate. Yes. Are you understand what I'm talking about? He said, when God speaks, everything he has, that's why in the beginning, he said, let that be in there was. The lights were here, the trees were here, the mountains were here, the rivers were here, the forests were here, the animals were here, and the sickness were here, and the tumor were here, and the cancerous condition were here, and the come and the appendicitis were here, and the glycoma were here, and the organ in your body were here, and the organ in your system were here, and when God speaks, the creation here. When God speaks, nothing around you can avoid the voice of God. Nothing around you can resist the voice of God. I speak healing now in your body. I speak healing in your flesh. I speak healing in your mind. I speak healing in your system. Receive it in the name of Jesus. You are restored. Your health. You will restore your health. You will restore your health. I said, You will restore your health. In the name of Jesus. Let me give you the last two today. In Amos chapter 9, verse 14. In Amos chapter 9, verse 14. What is it that God is going to recover? Amos 9, 14. He will recover your sons and your daughters. Hallelujah. He said, I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the west cities. Ah, you know, that's why I said, I don't like to read too many things because I can't afford to live it. God said, Listen to me. I know I have this relationship with my people. Every now and then, they are, you know, they are disobeying, they are coming back. But let me let you know that I go. When God says He will do something, don't be afraid to give it back to Him. Yeah, yeah. Men are afraid yeah. of our bosses more than we honor God. When God says, you know who's talking about? Yahweh. Oh, yes. 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 The beginning and the end. Yes. The I am that I am. The leader of the valley. The bright ones and the one who spoke the word into being. Yes. God did not sweat the bitter earth. The fact that he rested. It's not literal, literal resting. It's also figurative. He didn't have to sweat. He spoke. How many people see the time that from speaking? He said, let that be. And there was. Let that be, and there was. Let that be. That's why the one of the only thing you need to be established is a word from God. Amen. You can dodge anything, but you will not dodge a word from God. Amen. But if God says so, it doesn't matter how long you will come and it will come to pass in your life. If God speaks a word concerning you, come on, somebody. You can't. How many people can dodge the drop of rain? And it's coming from heaven, you will not dodge it. And it's coming from the voice of God, you cannot dodge it. You know what God says? So, he has the the potential he has a presence to bring and to pass. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he says, I will bring them, Asia, out of captivity so that they will build the waste cities. Now, share there, people, in some interpretation, my sons and daughters that have left. Out of disobedience, that are left and were taken into captivity. There are some of us, our sons and daughters, may not be into physical captivity, but are also in spiritual captivity. Yes. But I'd like you to lay on this word today, before the year ends, as we declare the word, God will restore your children. As God promised to restore his own children, so will he restore your own children. Are you understand what I'm talking about? God got children. He has the heart of a father. He has the hands of a mother. And he can miss his child. He knows exactly what you're going through. He can miss his children. He knows exactly what you're going through. That's what the soul worker said. He walked where I walk. He felt what I feel. He understands. He's not a God who is, who is not into the, the infirmity that we feel. He came and walked upon the terror. And every single thing that you go through, Christ can he starts with a feeling of our infirmity. So he knows how to respond like a father would. He knows how to respond like a mother would. So if he says, I call my children out of captivity, I brought my children out of exile so that they can begin to build the West City. I stand, I 
as a child of God this morning and declare to God's people for those who will receive the word that God will restore your sons, you will restore your daughters. They are not going to fire yet. They are not going to fire yet. They are not fire away. They hear the joy is not short. The grace of God is not limited. And it may be a year, and it may be two months, and it may be three months, and it may be four days, and it may be two years. And God's the matter with God. They can't run beyond the grace of God. I speak, I prophesy this morning that there will be a return of your sons and daughters. There will be a return of your sons and daughters. Every single year, he will mess up to get you this from the internet. Every single time, he will mess up to get you out of line with the plan and the purpose of God for your life. I decree and declare this morning, watch out for God. He's bringing somebody's child back home. Watch out for God. He's bringing somebody's son back home. Watch out for God. He's bringing somebody's daughter back we will be so your sons and your daughters. You will be so your sons and your daughters. You will be so your sons and your daughters. You will be so your sons and your daughters. And he can do it for his, he can do it for yours, and he can do it for his, he can do it for yours. So in Luke chapter 15, you find a boy who left home. He left home on his own adventure. He was not put out. We call him a predator son. Not because he was bad, he was just wistful. He just wanted to mature before time. So the Bible said he left home with his own part of the inheritance. It was already for him. He didn't have to leave before time, but he left. Are you here with me? I feel like preaching this word. He left with his inheritance. The inheritance belonged to him. The father belonged to him. Everything he had was his. But the only thing he didn't get right was the timing. You will not miss the timing anymore. I said, your children will not miss the timing anymore. Your sons and daughters are gone. They will not miss the timing anymore. He missed the timing. And the Bible said he went out into a far country and he began to fellowship to the extent that all things around him got lost. All things around him was whispered. To the extent that he came as low as feeding with the pigs. He went through tough time. He went through difficult time. He went through dangerous time. He stayed in a far country. But it's that no matter how far a distance geographically he was, he was still closer to his father's house. Mm-hmm. I don't know what mother he had this morning. I don't know what father he had this morning. They may look like they are far, but they are as close to you as your prayer. They may look like they are far, but they are as close to you as a word that you speak to God. They look like they are far, but even though when you wake up in the morning and you are driving, they are still on your mind. They are as close as we have touched you down. And the Bible said, the father will ever so often look on the road. In other words, when will he come back? Every time you will be watching, when will he come back? But somebody here, it may not be a physical distance, but it's just a disconnect from God. But somebody may not be a physical distance, but it's just a drag into heaven that you can't easily get them back. Even though they are with you, but they are so far away. Even though they are walking with you, but they are so far away. They don't have no understanding of God. They don't have no understanding of life. You read it in your, in your youthfulness. You wish that your children would walk with you. Just how different children are. Just how Abraham's children are. Just how the children of God. You in your mind, you thought that they would just walk with you. You just you had a beautiful plan. Everything was laid out. Everything was set up. You told your son, I will hold my grandchildren in their own time. I will not have all the mistakes I made. My children will not make those mistakes. Everything was thought of a plan. You had everything cookie cutter for you. And you knew that it would happen. And the way you been talking to God. But somewhere or the other, something fell along the cracks. And you see that they are fine. You see, when you woke up in the morning and look at you at 2,000, 10,000, 15,000 miles away, even when the ones that walk with you because of a lack of understanding of how you walk, they just look at me and fly away. But God said, I will restore my sons, I will restore my daughters, I will restore my children. I said, if God can do it for this, He can do it for you. If God can do it for this, He can do it for you. And one 
day, while the father sat, the young man came to himself and he decided to go home. He said, how many high servants does my father have? And he have enough to eat. How dare me sit here and have fellowship with peace? And he rose up and said he was going back home. I tell you, he didn't have sense enough. But he had a God who was more than enough. Oh, you didn't get me. I said, he didn't have sense enough. But he had a God who was more than enough. I tell you, you may not be able to follow them everywhere they go. But when you can follow God, God will look at them for you. I'm speaking something to you. You may not know the things they are doing, the places they go, and all the kinds of things they are doing. You may have no idea. But if you know where God is, God will see where they are. If you know where God is, God will look at them on your behalf. If you don't come up with a short time, you think they don't know, you think they don't understand, you think they have no idea. And it's true, they have no idea. But you serve a God who is more than enough. You serve a God who is everywhere. You serve a God who knows everything. The ideas are laws and the fullness are all. is solid, that time will bear fruit. Amen. 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 It's time. Amen. He makes all things beautiful. Amen. One of the challenges we have, sir, is that we don't understand times and seasons. In fact, because we're on this part of the world, the only seasons we know are winter, summer, spring, and fall. And so when we don't see anything in those calibrated season, we start to panic. Okay. Not knowing that God in his own sovereignty okay. has a season. Uh, 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 so we are born, yes. born and grew up, we have only two seasons. Okay. Rainy season, dry season. When we came here, I learned that there are four. But the more you walk with God, you know that there's still another season. Yes. Yes. So, when you see that things are not happening in winter, don't panic when you are in God. <laughs> when you see that things are not happening in the fall, don't panic when you are in God. You see, you can operate on the local economy, but you must also step up to understand God's economy. 
That's the problem Jesus had with the disciples. When he's talking about eating the dog of bread, he said, I eat, I have food that you don't love. Then they are asking him, sir, did anybody give him food? Then Peter said, Who brought food from my master when I didn't bring food? Who brought you eating? You know, Peter was an African. Who brought Jesus eating? I will not buy bread. He's not eating my bread. Chief, who brought us eating? Come on, say, I don't know. You may not see it today. I'm not looking 
her to you. I'm looking at God. She has scarred. He will make all things beautiful. In two seasons, at a time of life. Are you still in church? Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's leave it there. In two seasons. Don't let anybody beat you down with their mouth. Don't let anybody beat you down with their so-called statistics. Hey. Oh my goodness. I said, don't let any doctor beat you down with their so-called graph. Don't let anybody beat you down with their so-called in the range of. They know how to speak broken when they get to their situation in the range of giving the graph, giving the curve, giving the own. God will dismiss that graph before your season has arrived. I said, God will dismiss that graph before your season has arrived. God will dismiss that graph. But he chose to be so. Rise on Jesus. Bring me more! 